It's Monday. It's January 15th. And the word of the day is respair. Straight from my favorite lexicographer, Susie Dent, quote, it's from the 16th century, and it means fresh hope and a recovery from despair. Huh. One of too many lost positives we could do with bringing back. Wishing everyone a gruntled, gormful, ruthful, and feckful new year full of respair. See, I, I was sure you wouldn't go with that one, but I guess it wasn't as evitable as I thought. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> and I wish I knew so little about lexicography that I could choose just one favorite. Heath, your simplicity is adorable to me. <laughs> I have no okay. illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright, and broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, Alaska Airlines catches a little too much air. We'll explain to Ron DeSantis that thought police aren't supposed to go after all thought. And we learn about darts from our intrepid sports reporter, Eli Bosnick. Yeah. But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, no illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, happy MLK Day and happy 2024. Any resolutions this year? Yeah, I, I'm going to bend towards justice. Yeah. Nice, double topical. Yeah, and if you think I'm going to celebrate some guy just because his dad nailed some complaints on a church door, you've got another thing coming, Heath. <laughs> <Okay>. Nepotism. <laughs> cool. Canceled right away. Just right. What, 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 January 14th. There we Fine. go. We got him, everyone. <laughs> We recorded day early. Yeah. In our lead story tonight. <laughs> you did that to yourself this time. That's just yeah. impressive. Yeah. yeah. Today's the 14th. It's tomorrow. a get ahead. It's a get ahead for tomorrow <laughs> This morning. is a get ahead by one day. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> All recordings are by definition. <laughs> what time is it? 2.15. <laughs> in our lead story tonight, instead of participating in a debate with the GOP primary field, Donald Trump continued his campaign in Iowa last week with a personal town hall on Fox News just for him with his favorite toy and a juice. And honestly, it's a pretty good strategy. It lets him avoid the competitive pitfalls of, you know, having competitors, and there's no intellectual hardball for him. Instead, he set himself up with a game of one-player t-ball. Yet, somehow he lost at one-player t-ball, whatever that means. It was like Vladimir Putin's hockey game, except after skating past all the paid actors, Trump just smashed into the board's head first and shat himself and then took his puck and went home crying. Hey, which, which is weird because that's exactly what happened when he did literally anything at any point in his entire goddamn life, too. Yeah, yeah t Tall Tyler's like, now, sir, your opponent in this debate is going to be pretty hard on you. It's um you. You and the words you say <laughs> out loud right. on purpose. All right, so let's start with a question about a running mate. Despite the best efforts of Trump's constituency, Mike Pence never got hanged, but it looks like Pence is <laughs> off the table regardless. Huh. So Fox host Martha McCallum said, can you tell us who it might be? And Trump responded, yes. <laughs> and then, then he explained that he definitely has a real answer. That's a person, but he can't tell us right now. In T-ball terms, he took a pitch in T-ball. <laughs> There's no pitching in T-ball, but he took one anyway. He had Fox News tee up a very basic question, and his answer was pass. And then Brett Baer, the other host, said, can you give us a hint? And Trump said, exact words, we'll do another show sometime. Cool. Oh, okay, so I'm, I'm putting my money down now. His declared running mate is going to be also him. <laughs> yeah, him he too. finally got his hands on one of Tall Tyler's puppet pals, and he's the nominee. <laughs> right, right. There are constitutional lawyers looking that up. If he yep. could be his own running mate, for sure he asked somebody to do that. So McCallum and Bear just stared at Trump for like 10 seconds of silence, and then they took the ball off the tee, put that same ball back on the tee, and tried again. Bear said, can you say tonight that political violence is never acceptable. And Trump actually got this one right for a second and then immediately got it wrong, like all the ways. He said, of course, political violence is never acceptable, and I'm the one who's had very little of it. But then he what? explained how he didn't engage the U.S. military in violence. And, oh, for and then he explained how he engaged the U.S. military in violence, at which point a very reasonable follow-up from the hosts might have been, Oh, right. You're an imbecile. We obviously didn't mean war. We meant, you know, fomenting a coup. Sorry. Okay. We meant 
doing a steel bad no no. <laughs> but of course, Bear and McCallum are Fox News lackeys, and they just moved on without asking any follow ups. Oh my God. In my adult life, we've gone from politicians pondering what the definition of is is to politicians legitimately <laughs> not knowing. <laughs> so from there, we got Trump claiming that if he doesn't win, there's going to be a stock market crash. But he also wished for a stock market crash this year before the election. Mm -hmm. it, it's weird that he's an owner of stocks. I'm sure he'll go ahead and short the everything sometime really soon. He's just biding his time. Trump said exact words again. I don't want to be Herbert Hoover. Oh, well, then maybe you shouldn't suck so damn <laughs> much. Get it? I, <laughs> it's, it's Hoover. Nice. <laughs> Another moment worth mentioning was about Donald Trump's very obvious quest for vengeance against laws, I guess, mm -hmm. as a concept. Given that Trump spends most of his time shouting a list of enemies and throwing plates of ketchup and steak that I'm certain is pre-cut by an aide so Trump doesn't choke, Bear said, how much would a second term for you end up being all about retribution? And Trump responded by saying, I'm not going to have time for retribution because I'll be so busy crushing it and winning and then crushing it again. His exact words, there won't be retribution. There will be success. I'm sorry. Uh, was your answer, I won't have time for vengeance because I'll be too busy taking revenge? Is that what you... Yeah, that was his exactly. answer. You know what they say, revenge is the best success. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was the president of the United States. I sure was were, president. buddy. Sure were. And... Just one other moment that I want to mention. Trump got a question about all the money he's made from wealthy Chinese and Russian investors who stayed at his hotels. And his response was nonsense. But during his word salad nonsense, he said the phrase, my hotels, at which point he was physically incapable of continuing his answer without stopping to say exact quote. And you, you could see him stop and like do this tangent. and He couldn't help it. And he says, <laughs> I have the best hotels. I have the best clubs. And when he said clubs, that's when this audience of almost entirely old people from Iowa goes crazy with applause because of his club. A lot of clubbers there. Yeah. So, okay. At this point, I feel like they're just applauding because he got through a whole thought without blaming windmills for cancer or yelling about his <laughs> toilet not flushing all the way or whatever. They're like, oh, that was an English <laughs> sentence. Well done. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's. And, and, and I can't emphasize this enough that Heath is not exaggerating because he plays it for applause and his audience is so stupid and everything he says is so nonsense that they're just like, he fucking paused. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just a reminder, those toilets wouldn't flush because he rips up paper and throws it Keeps in there because he thinks there, yeah. you have to get rid of the paper trail down of the your presidency <laughs> yeah by ripping the dumb notes he had in half yeah so the bigotry and the science denial and stacking the supreme court with christian lunatics and the impeachment and the other impeachment and the federal crimes and the other federal crimes and the other federal crimes and the other federal crimes and the treason that's all pretty bad but if your voting base does an applause break for the concept of clubbing, <laughs> you need to be banned from the ballot in every state. <laughs> Absurd geriatric Iowans doing the applause or otherwise. Unbelievable. All right, we're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Stupid journal, notebook, bullet, calendar. Hey, Elon. D What's the matter? Yeah, you were doing pre-ad mumble grumbles. It's these New Year's resolutions. None of them fixed my life, and none of them sharpened my jawline. I mean, that second thing seems like it would take surgery. You don't know. Do. Maybe... Look, Eli, lots of folks start the new year with resolutions to do and be better. And one of the most meaningful ways to help make those changes is to start therapy if you haven't already. Wait, starting therapy can make me a better person? Sure can. It can help you communicate better, work through your feelings in a more healthy way, and it's really helpful for stress, blues, or whatever else you might be dealing with. But guys, I've convinced myself I don't have time for therapy. Well, that's why there's BetterHelp. What's BetterHelp? If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. 
Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So if I needed a therapist who's secular or queer affirming, they could help me find that? That's exactly right. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Skeptocrat. All right, fellas, thanks. Say, either of you want a 365-day bullet calendar? Ah, I don't think that's a thing, man. Well, I bought it on the TikTok shop, so they had to sell it to me. Did they? Mm Mm-hmm. And we're back. Next up in headlines in Boeing, Boeing news. Okay. (laughs) Boeing, Boeing gone. Ah, how dare you? That's so good. That's That's so good. After the loss of a fuselage panel of a Boeing 737 MAX 9 operated by Alaska Airlines last week, the Federal Aviation Administration on Thursday said it had opened an investigation to whether Boeing had failed to ensure that its 737 MAX 9 plane was safe and manufactured to match the design approved by the agency because, almost exact quote, What the fuck was that, you guys? What the ever-loving fuck was that? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, loss of a fuselage panel. That, that's that got to be the most anodyne possible way of saying God fucked a hole into the side of the plane midair, <laughs> which is yeah. what happened. Okay, you know how press conferences sometimes have the person doing sign language? If an airline has a major fuck up and they do a press conference, they should have, well, definitely that. Plus, like a guy from Brooklyn who comes up after they say loss of fuselage panel, and the Brooklyn guy's just like, yeah, God fucked a hole in the side of the plane midair. That's what happened. <laughs> and then a mime acts that out. That needs to be a law. <laughs> Interesting. I love it. I love it. Yeah, so for those of you who missed this, shortly after the takeoff from Portland last week on Alaska Airlines Flight 128, the fucking door blew off 16,000 feet in the air, and the resulting gaping hole remained open and dangerous, sucking several headrests off the seats and quite reasonably scaring the ever-loving fuck out of the 177 passengers on board until the plane made it to the ground. Oh, God, you know the flight attendants had to be like, oh, no, what do I do? Wish I'd been paying attention when the emergency features of the aircraft was demonstrated. (laughs) Hey, everybody, don't go near the gaping hole is the new command. Can I get an audible yes from everyone in the room? (laughs) Oh, you're all screaming yes, 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 yes. Great, great. Cool. Cool, Cool. you're paying attention Hey, look, headphones guy actually can hear me. That's crazy, sir, that you can hear me now. All right. So yeah. What podcast are you listening to? Too slow, liar. Don't go by the hole. So, yeah, as you've probably guessed, planes are not supposed to do that. (laughs) All Boeing 737 MAX 9s have been grounded uh, as the two airlines that operate the MAX 9 in the United States, Alaska Airlines and United Airlines, found either loose hardware or bolts in the assembly Uh of the door plugs on the craft. United Airlines says its discovery pointed to, quote, possible installation issues. You think? (laughs) Possible? (laughs) Mm -hmm. And the planes remain grounded pending details on FAA-mandated inspections. And the FAA is still reviewing guidance on the inspections from Boeing. Uh, hey, Boeing, FAA here. Sorry to call you at home. Um, how do we check for, like, door-blowing offness on your shit? Is there a <laughs> procedure? Yeah, l- let us know about that. And just to review, if your installation guy finishes putting together the door and there's a handful of Legos left over, uh, no, he didn't. He right. did not yep. finish putting together the door. <laughs> just dump them in there. doesn't count for leftover bolts on the airplane door. <laughs> I don't know, we didn't say that specifically, but that is the policy. Yeah, but it actually gets weirder. Uh, so rumors have circulated online that it was Alaska engineers that made modifications to Boeing's designs, and that was the actual problem. With one viral TikTok suggesting that Alaska Airlines' head of software had made adjustments to the design of nearly every one of the airline's airplanes. What? Change? Like, uh, uh, have, you guys, have you guys even tried loosening these bolts over here? Have you? Bolts really actually tight? might be a hoax. Do yeah. your own research is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. oh, exactly. What? So the FAA, who mostly spend their time telling drunk assholes who go viral on YouTube that they take the train for the rest of their lives, is looking into things. You know, because that's their job. Either way, if you, podcast listener, have an unreasonable fear of flying, congratulations. That's just a normal, reasonable fear you have now, at least until we figure out what the fuck is going on. There you go. 
and in less defense than the Browns news. Uh, I'd Fantastic. like to think <laughs> Topical. that my job is less important than that of U.S. Secretary of Defense, but disagree in, in the estimation Strong disagree as well two votes yeah <laughs> well at the three because in the estimation of defense secretary lloyd austin maybe not so much uh because like if i was going to be unavailable for a few days i would tell you guys i would definitely tell you guys but when austin was hospitalized over prostate cancer procedures uh earlier this month he was out of commission for a full three days before his office thought to notify the white house Wait, which is fine because there's not much going on around the world at the moment in terms of national defense, but it could have been a real issue otherwise. Yeah. And what's the only thing worse than the situation in Gaza? The auto ads. I'll be back in a few <laughs> days. We'll figure out the uh, defense stuff. <laughs> okay. Wrong show, Heath, but I will be stealing that. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> now, for his part, Austin is characterizing his failure to disclose the situation as a lapse in judgment from a very private person. Which is fucking nuts. The initial reports on this thing called this hospitalization a closely guarded secret, which suggests significantly more than an oopsie. Uh, Republicans are predictably calling for his resignation over it or barring that calling for impeachment, uh, which, to be fair, they'd also have been calling for if the dart had hit his name instead of Alejandro Mayorkas's. But uh, to be clear, it's insane that the secretary of defense would be laid up in the hospital for several days without the president knowing about it. And it matters. He's like an important link in the nation's chain of command. So no amount of being intensely personal could possibly justify this. Seriously, during those three days, Joe Biden texted me because Austin wasn't responding. <laughs> <laughs> it's dire. Now, to be clear, everything I know about Austin to this point makes me like him a lot. Granted, I don't know that much. I know that A, he's the first African-American to reach the position of Secretary of Defense. B, he's the author of the abortion policy that had Tommy Tuberville so pissed off. C, Good work. he strongly urged Biden not to pull out of Afghanistan when and how he did. And D, all the new shit that I just told you about, about the prostate cancer and shit. So pretty solid resume all in all. Uh, of course, I did read a piece about this shit in the New York Times that might as well have been written by the dude's mom, uh, and that might be coloring my opinion of him to some degree. Yeah, that article doxed him a lot. It did, that, it did. That, that he used his the whole time. <laughs> uh, but I feel like the real dark secret that he exposed here is that generally speaking, the people in charge of large institutions don't actually do anything. Right? It's like how... Uh, you know when, when Musk started wearing his I'm a stupid crazy person on the outside of his clothes, everybody was like, wow, how has SpaceX and Tesla operated successfully this whole time? And everybody who's ever worked in middle management was like, are you really asking that as a question? Is that really your fucking <laughs> yeah. question? It's like that. Uh, like I said, it doesn't justify his lack of disclosure, but it's also an important reminder of who's really doing the work when it comes to running the country. Yeah, the deep state is. Exactly. And speaking of prostate cancer, it's a great time to pause for a word from our other sponsor this week, Policy Genius. And did he get to meet Mickey? <laughs> he did. Oh, that's great. Oh, wait. Sorry, the guys are here. I got to go. Yeah, no, I loved you too. Yeah, I loved you too. Hey, Eli. Who was that? Oh, that was Anna. Uh, she was telling me about my son's 10th birthday on the future phone. Sorry, the, the future phone? Yeah, I got one when I got life insurance from PolicyGenius.com because that's what having life insurance is like. A direct line to your loved ones knowing that they'll be okay. Oh, I've never gotten life insurance. Yeah, I, I've been meaning to do that. Y you said I can get it online? You sure can. Policy Genius's technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. Even if you already have a life insurance policy through work, it might not offer enough protection for your family's needs. And it may not follow you if you leave your job. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Plus, Policy Genius has licensed, award winning agents who can help you find the best fit for your needs. And they work for you, not the insurance companies. That means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance. Wow, that does sound easy. It is. Save time and money and give your family a financial safety net with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. All right, Eli, that sounds great. Thanks. So you guys want to call someone after you die? You guys you guys want to call? Mm, maybe wait till we visit Policy Genius. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to wait too. 
It's a dark ending. Yeah, well, don't leave your loved ones destitute. And we're back. Next up in headlines, in Low Blobes news, <laughs> we have a story about fistfights in public and just barely U.S. Representative Lauren Boebert of somewhere in Colorado, but not the place where she almost lost the election right. last time somewhere else. She's moving around, maybe, sort of. Instead of District 3, where she edged out Democrat Adam Frisch by 546 votes and the fucking muzzle of a rifle in 2022, she's now running in District 4, where they have a rating in the polls of Republican plus 13, and they have a retiring incumbent. And she still might lose in the primary. Wow. She's so <laughs> shitty. And she got scared away from District 3 by Barbara Streisand and Ryan Reynolds after they donated to Frisch's new campaign, which is delightful. But that's not the story I want to talk about. I want to talk about the headline that came out last week that said something like, Lauren Boebert punches ex-husband in the face during lunch at TGI Fridays. That's not exactly how it happened, as it turns out, but it sounded perfectly reasonable to all of us when we saw it. I yep. think yeah. I can speak for mm -hmm. everyone. Absolutely. And uh, hey, let's be honest, of all the parts of himself he regularly exposes in public, that's far from the most painful one to get punched in. So Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He should be so, painful. Win for everybody. Here's what actually happened. Bobert was having lunch with her ex-husband, Jason, and yes, great question from whoever that was that just shouted it out. Jason did expose himself to a group of kids at a bowling alley. And then, later in the time dimension, when that was an established fact, Lauren married him. And they're both garbage people, so they got divorced. Yeah, I mean, a fact you would have known at a glance if you saw that he spells his name J-A-Y-S-O-N. It's with a Y. Sure is. Mm -hmm. So, last week... They were meeting for lunch to talk about how they're going to split up their collection of comically oversized gun holsters. Of course. And sure. apparently the discussion got heated and eventually Jason accused her of punching him in the face. So the local police investigated and Lauren was cleared of the allegations on Wednesday after Jason recanted his claim. So now the headline <laughs> during this election year reads something like, Lauren Boebert did not punch ex-husband in the face at a restaurant in Silt, Colorado, at least as far as we know, which is still so very bad as a headline for so many reasons, not the least of which is you went to a place named after settled gunk right. to have lunch. To eat. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And also, if they if they really included the in the face as a qualifier, that leaves a lot of options open. Right. Thank <laughs> you, <laughs> Noah. Right. Yeah. As a resident, I didn't punch you expert from Garbage Land, upstate New York. Nobody getting accused of punching someone in the face wasn't doing some kind of face based shove or hitting. Right. <laughs> Every time. Yes. <laughs> so, according to Lobobes, the meeting turned sour when they started talking about their new sexual partners. Pin in that. And she ended the conversation, according to her, by placing a finger on Jason's nose. That's when Jason called 911. Police said he was highly intoxicated at this point, and he reported her for domestic abuse. So, okay, here's the thing. Best case scenario for Lauren Boebert, granting that her account is perfectly accurate, she tried to end a heated argument by booping yes! this person's nose. <laughs> and that's insane. It's so hard to picture. I'm, I'm like, the whole time that you're talking, I'm trying to imagine in my head a threatening snoot boop at the end of an argument. <laughs> and it's entirely beyond my mental capacity. Okay, well, you know, I'm going to try it next time either one of you gets mad at me. And I'll let our <laughs> audience know how it goes. I... I have a feeling it's not going to go great, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's take out that pin now. The conversation about their new sexual partners must have touched on Lauren getting kicked out of Beale Juice the musical <laughs> for vaping and very clearly giving some guy a hand job. So the people in TGI Fridays or whatever restaurant it was in Silt, Colorado, got to watch an amazing messy fight between a sitting congressperson and her ex-husband who was wasted on like eight ultimate Long Island iced teas during lunch, <laughs> yelling about Lauren giving a heege to some random guy all over YouTube while my friends are watching it too now. Fucking ridiculous. And that argument 
ended in a nose boop and then a 911 call. People got to watch, be like, yes, boop. And then him being like, I'm going fucking 911. Get me another Long Island, by the way. This <laughs> must have been the best day ever for everyone. The who server there. had yeah, for such sure. an awesome story after they got home. Jesus Christ. These people couldn't be more white trash if there was like a fucking flock of plastic seagulls that preceded them in public like Roman lictors or some <laughs> yeah. shit. Noah's neighbors are being lowered into a cop car head first watching this on the news being like no class at all those two (laughs) watch my hand (laughs) just watch it and just one other detail lauren responded to the beetlejuice incident by tweeting i plead guilty to laughing and singing too loud which makes it so much better because now we know there's a theater in colorado with surveillance footage of lauren bobert Singing and dancing and laughing along with Beetlejuice whilst giving a no look hand job <laughs> off to her right. And that makes me like her honestly so much more. That should be her campaign video. Like, I'd <laughs> almost vote for her. No, you wouldn't. No, but um, no, not even almost, no. but still, something yeah. useful. That's impressive. And in Darts Entertainment News, podcast listener. Does this yearly talk of foot a ball turn your brain to jelly like it does mine? It's, you don't blame that. Your brain was already jelly. That's what brains That's are. That's fair. Does the talk of downs and first yards and tackles leave what? you cold and blue? Would you rather watch Comic-Con than bring it on? Well, then, do I have the sport for you? That's right. I'm talking about last week's World Darts championship and put it on the board everybody because this one was fucking lit all right well if i will i have to grant you that anything with a fire word in the description is the opposite of what football was this weekend so okay yeah also they need to start playing snow darts fuck yeah like if there's a snow bar out there i feel like everybody in yeah, darts, no question. the whole world of darts 100%. is on board mm-hmm yeah. So Bored. you might be asking yourself, what's so crazy about the world's darts championship that it'll get even the scroogiest of sports deniers in the competitive spirit? Well, where do I begin? First off, it's three goddamn weeks long and takes place at Alexandra Palace in London, or as the fans call it, the Alley Pally. <laughs> of course they do. I took three weeks, though. Three measly fucking weeks, Eli. The NBA playoffs last for 22 years, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Two, costumes. That's right. Everyone at the World Starts Tournament dresses up in costumes. I don't know what you're thinking. Do they perhaps dress up as their favorite darts players, like 16-year-old Luke Littler, who came within a single match of the grand prize this year? Or Yaya and Kolo Toure, who enter the playing field to the (laughs) anthem of their own names, sung to the tune of No Limit by the 90s band (laughs) 2 Unlimited? No, By no, the no. way, Yaya and Kolo, both uh, Premier League players, too. Uh, retired soccer players. Ooh, so good. Yeah. They were just like, facts. all right, we're going to become a professional other sport now that you can do when you're old. But it's no, smart. no, there are no competitor cosplays, my friend. That would make sense. And if there appears to be a rule at the World Darts Championship, it's that absolutely nothing about it makes sense. People dress like characters from Alice in Wonderland. People dress like their favorite soccer players. One group, featured in the photo slideshow I linked in the show notes, dressed like crayons and traffic cones and gave out free beers to anyone willing to limbo underneath the limbo stick they brought with them into the stands of the darts (laughs) tournament. Nice. All right, there is zero question that adopting all of that would improve the NBA playoffs. I'm with you. (laughs) Also, if basketball was, in addition to, you know, the game of basketball, a drinking game that happens almost entirely inside a pub and, like, the ball had a metal spike on it and they had a limbo component, that the NBA might finally make some money if they switched it up a little bit. Rival the NFL a bit. They might have some famous people from their thing. (laughs) Finally get a little attention. So, yeah. If the Super Bowl has always left you feeling less than super, if the World Series makes you feel in a world of your own, tune in. Or, if at all humanly possible, participate in this beautiful human celebration if you ever get a chance. Plus, all the athletes are in worse shape than me and none of them get to date Taylor Swift. So that's always a bonus, everybody. <laughs> there you that go. always is a bonus. And finally tonight, in It Does Have a Dick in the Title News, 
We have an update on the latest effort to protect Florida students from knowing things that is the DeSantis administration. Uh, we've talked a lot about HB 1069 on this show. That's the Florida book banning law that used the specter of grooming and sexualization of children to oust such pornographic fuck fest novels as the diary of Anne Frank from school libraries. Uh, well, it turns out the latest victim of the draconian dragnet of dipshittery is none other than the goddamn dictionary which has now been officially removed from school libraries in escambia county florida for being too risque okay this was literally our joke about this yes. bill when it came out and now it's real there's no more jokes everybody no more jokes ron DeSantis murdered the very concept of jokes That's great right. job mm -hmm. and so what we may or may not do at our orlando live show is self-defense that's everybody. right keep that in mind he's coming Stand for your ground us. So first things first, thanks to Jacqueline who sent us this story at skeptocratnews at gmail.com. Uh, but yeah, the bill in here, to be clear, isn't the schools, it's the law. Escambia County schools are just doing what they're legally required to do under this ridiculous fucking bill. Uh, see, what makes HB 1069 so batshit is that it bans a book if it, quote, depicts or describes sexual conduct, end quote, regardless if it does so in a pornographic way. And the dictionaries, which very clearly describe sex under the entry for, you know, sex, are in clear violation. Okay, Florida has a book of laws, and one of the laws makes that book illegal. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> they made a law that needs, like, a note and a margin that adds, okay, whereas, I think, uh, do, do, I think we swooshed to doodly do in our, <laughs> I'm lost. I do, uh, just no being gay or something. Right, yeah, yeah, at know. the very least, they We're need an, a, like, a, a volume of, except for that. And that. Yeah, and right, that, yeah, right, yeah, right. Just <laughs> infinite uh, footnotes, yeah. And, and perhaps the funniest detail, by the way, is the dictionaries in question could not possibly define sex in a less woke way. Here's the actual fucking 1850s definition of sex from Merriam-Webster's Elementary Dictionary. Quote, sexual union involving penetration of the vagina by the penis, end quote. Uh, but That's then... It. Well, it adds in like a second sense, quote, intercourse such as anal or oral intercourse that does not involve penetration of the vagina by the penis, end quote. Great. So, yeah, it's pretty heavy stuff. If anybody needs a minute to cool down, I understand. Definition three, you can also rub it around the top area without going inside sometimes. That's actually very popular. It does dishonor the penis and like, you know, the jackhammer philosophy. But, you know, what are you going to do? Our definition of sex failed the Bechdel test on every line. Yeah, shoot it. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> hey, Heath, I'm going to break it to you on behalf of whomstever lied to you however many years ago. Nobody wants you to try to butter their toast with your hot dog, just so you know. <laughs> okay. Not, um... I hate to break it to you. You might be playing below your potential. Just saying. <laughs> this is, Everybody's this is... different. Everybody likes different stuff, That's but true. there's Hill, a chance. I die on. Listeners? You're, you're, a, you're a jack. I, I would have guessed you're more artful, not just a jackhammer only. I'm guy. mostly a balls do? work guy. I mostly do a lot of work with the balls. Okay. You get it. You get, but oh, but you get in there. This is my with my balls. God absolutely. <laughs> so <laughs> interesting. So yeah. So learned a lot today. You can imagine this law has been an absolute fucking nightmare for school libraries uh, in Escambia County. Schools just preemptively closed all their libraries altogether at the beginning of the school year, and then slowly reopened them with the tiny selection of books the librarians had managed to magnifying glass their way through, looking for references to the most referenced human act after speaking. Right. Um, I should probably also add that when the legislature passed this law, they didn't bother including extra funds to pay the school librarians for all this magnifying glassing that they were going to be doing. Right. Um, all the state lawmakers gave them really was a website run by Moms for Liberty that tells you which books are acceptable, according to the uh, Ministry of Truthiness. OK, if your thing has liberty in the title and you helped ban the book of words, uh, uh intercourse your face i don't know how to end that <laughs> or around your face am i right you king of pleasure yeah, right. huh? yeah, just get it so you can smush it around a little bit now so that we don't lose track of the overall plot here the point behind all of this is to get rid of books that acknowledge the existence of gay and trans people Right. This all grows out of their fight against the boogeyman of wokeism. And it's a surprise to nobody paying attention that they're willing to sacrifice dictionaries and the diary of Anne Frank, along with apparently eight encyclopedias, two thesauruses and five editions of the Guinness <laughs> Book of World Records to get that. But 
Just in case you need some kind of silver lining to cling to, I'm going to close this off by pointing out that among the hundreds and hundreds of titles yanked from Florida school children are two Bill O'Reilly books and Atlas Shrugged, so at least there's that. That's good stuff. <laughs> the Guinness Book needs to put in dumbest law of yeah, all time. Right, this. Right. Yeah. There you go. All right. On that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to Nolusions. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. And thanks to all the listeners who liked us and followed us on all the various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening. And please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. It's so helpful. Please. We, we would love it if you would do that. Just like Graydon Armstrong, Josh Weir, Blue Violet, Stephen Adams, Brian Cunningham, Justin Borowski, Brett, J, Nathan Burnett, Christy Rui, Andrew Siner, and We Can Feed Everybody. You are the crit 20s of people, and we love you. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available in all the podcast places. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. So I just finished yesterday reading this book uh, about Cuban history that just came out last year and it won the Pulitzer Prize. And it was, it was a really good book. My, my sister is uh, an expert on Latin American history. That's her field and everything. So I was really looking forward to this book. Read this book. It's the first time that this has happened to me. And I just have to get used to this now because I love reading history. It's the first time I was reading a history book where it had to go. And then Trump came along and everything was fucked. It was like oh, the first no. point like, where a history book had to include that, like, because, you know, obviously the history of Cuba, the thaw in relations under Obama is a huge part of the story, right? That's the, the happy ending of this fucking story, right? And then, of course, the, the book has to go on and then say, and then Trump come in, came in and made everything worse and worse and worse, and hopefully that's not forever uh, the end. And I'm like, I have to just get used to that always showing up in history books now. Mm-hmm. So... That was sad. Very <laughs> sad. As an expert on Cuban history, um, which version of the sandwich does your sister like best, the Miami <laughs> or the Tampa? I, I don't know. I'd have to ask. Okay. It's very important. Yeah. There is a fucking blood feud in Florida about this. They are serious. There, there have been murders over whether sh you should have salami in there or not. My favorite thing about Cuban history is that along with like the incredibly intense and relevant political information, there's stuff like, and then we tried to kill Fidel Castro with an exploding cigar. Yeah, I'm totally going to do a Fidel Castro citation needed episode. Ba now, Bay of Pigs episode? Well, yeah. I did Bay of we Pigs. Did the Bay of Pigs. Yeah. Ah. Um, yeah, you were on it. Yeah, but uh, I, I I have to do a. Because there's so much, there's so much fun <laughs> shit about. Castro's rise to power that I didn't know before I read this book, so I'm very excited about that. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2024, all rights reserved. When something happens to your car, you might say, No! My car! But what you really need to say is something that can actually help. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Just like that, State Farm is there to help you file your claim right on the State Farm mobile app. So, just remember, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. State Farm Bloomington.